Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Critical Podcast. My name is Jimmy Good, and joining me this week is my go-to podcast compadre, Mr. Joe Lever. Joe, how you doing, pal? I'm doing great, Jimmy. Mr. Lever, reporting for duty. Yes, uh, you have like a horse hat. I do have a horse hat. Stallion? What are you, are you a stallion, Joe? Are you... I just like the hat. You know, it's one of those high crown trucker hats. It's perfect. Perfect. Uh, I mean, besides talking about trucker hats here on the show, because I feel like that is a rabbit hole I see myself on the precipice of. So if we were to make CR clothing and we were to make a hat, we would go for the high crown trucker hat. You know what I'm saying? Optimal marketing with large surface area on the forehead. This is true, and we are working on it. Uh, we have some spreadshirt designs in the works. Like They just have to get okayed, and then we'll figure out the hat situation. So don't worry, Joe. We'll get you a big old CR hat. <laughs> It'll be great. It'll be red C, white R. It'll be cool. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for joining us here today. We talk about movies, games, TV shows, all the other things we love besides high crown trucker hats. Uh, yeah, man, we just we have so much to discuss, Joe. We have a few bits of news I want to talk about first. Joe, if you had to guess how much, and this is not going to be spoilers, try to guess how much Avengers Infinity War has made thus far. <laughs> I feel like you asked that question as you're typing to see what it made. <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, I wrote it down as a news thing, and I was like, I should probably open that tab back up. Uh, <laughs> it's I probably know changed this. since I wrote it down. I want to. I want to make sure it's like up to date. Anyway, Joe, take a guess. Take a stab. Well, okay. After opening weekend, we looked at it. What was it at at that point? It was at like an opening of... I can't even remember. I can't remember. The opening weekend for it um, from the 27th to the 29th was 257 million. And I believe that was domestically, I think. Unless that was worldwide. So we're going domestic or worldwide? We are going with, let's see what the foreign market was. No, 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 that's too good. Whoa, wow, this is crazy. No, we're just doing, we're just doing overall. Just guess overall right now. We're, let's not get into the nitty. It, it made the most, it's uh, the biggest box office release of any movie over a weekend, like ever. Like Force Awakens, it beat Force Awakens. It's beating everything. Just take a guess right now. Would you say north or south of 1 billion? South. South of 1 billion? Yeah, just okay. under all right, well, I'm happy to report that you're wrong. As of right now, domestically, as of May 8th, um, when we record, well, I guess May 9th, but anyway, uh, it's made $472 million here alone in the States. However, abroad, it's made roughly $755 million, putting it at $1.2 billion. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's like, ah, ah. Um, that's a lot of a lot of cheddar baby am i right like that's that's great that's i mean that's that's impressive numbers it's 10 years of build up though right am i right i think that's just that's part of it wouldn't you say i i would agree i would agree um 10 years of build up it should make all of those movies everything that each of those movies made throughout those 10 years added up is what this one should make yeah, I don't think that's how it works. I like it. I like where your thoughts at. Uh, your head is at. But uh, well, I think of like you know, Black Panther made like over a billion dollars, and I think it brought in a lot more people who weren't into the MCU at that point. And then to say, hey, let's Black Panther is also going to be in Infinity War. You should go check that movie out too. I think that also really helps it as well. Like to come off the back of like a really just well loved and critically acclaimed film, and to go right into this, I think it helps. Yeah, and they maybe mainstreamed it a little bit more, a little bit more, I don't want to say pop culture, but relatable to our generation overall. Yeah. Black Panther? It's, yeah, it's not his niche. It was a bit of a cultural movement, you know? Yeah, that's for sure. Well, they make a lot of uh, kind of um, pop culture references in it. Like a lot, there's like some meme jokes and some things. It's like, oh, okay. I didn't know all those, but I still laughed at it because they're still funny on their own. That's why good comedy, man, littered throughout and not overused. That's what I like. Anyway, I saw talking about that for just a hot second because it was like, seems like a lot of money and it's just going to keep going and we'll, we'll track it as it goes. But that's crazy. I, I don't see any movie topping that anytime soon, though, as far as that opening weekend, because we have yeah, like probably Venom. 
Oh no, no, okay. I thought for serious, I was like, oh my gosh, you're killing me. Uh, well, like Jurassic World, it was kind of like in that Force Awakens like arena where that first weekend it came out and made a lot of money, but it's because it'd been like 20 years or whatever since we had seen, you know, Jurassic Park or just like the fervor was there. Same with like Star Wars. It's like, oh, it's been so long since we've had like a proper Star Wars film. And now we've had this buildup. I just, it's going to be a long time before I think we see something like really come in and crush it like this movie. Yeah, I don't think Jurassic World will get there. In fact, I think this one will do worse than the last Jurassic World. Oh, for sure. And I think uh, one of the issues, you know, a lot of people might have is they just kind of look at it and say like, yeah, it's like the same thing you did last time, just like on like maybe U.S. soil or something. I don't know. It's just hybrid dinosaurs, guys. Like, seriously, you got to stop. Like, <laughs> I don't know what else you do with it. Just just please stop it. Um, Maybe it'll be good. I just don't care. I just don't really care. Also, s- side note, trailer talk here for just a second. We we do a show called Trailer Bastard, which, by the way, we are going to wrap up after we see Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. So that'll be season one, and then we'll do season two or whatever. But anyway, so there's this shot at the end where the dinosaur is creeping up on the little girl, you know, right? She's He's, he's going to get her, or it's going to get get the little girl. However, earlier in that trailer, we see Chris Pratt, like, in that same room with a shotgun, like, shooting that thing. So all I'm thinking is like, did you just cut that scene and just like flip it? And you're like, because like that doesn't really hold a lot for me as far as being scary. Joe, do you know what I'm talking about here? It's like yeah, they're trying to make. No, the, the trailers are poorly done. Yeah. Not to mention they've already given away the whole deal. I mean, I know. we I was... know how it's going to go down. Yeah, man. I was watching that trailer again the other night and I was like, man, I was like, the, I, what? where's the suspense? Like, yeah. I mean, like what? Just it's show not, me the whole it's movie. It's not like they showed you a little bit from like the early third of the movie. Which, yeah. actually, um, I think uh, uh, Infinity War did a good job of that. But they show you the whole hundred percent, like a clip from each spot in the movie. You know, each segment, and then you're just like, okay. So if I scramble that that way, okay, yeah, I know that they're rescuing dinosaurs from the island because the volcano's gonna explode. Company tricks them into doing so. Company takes dinosaurs hostage, sells them on the black market. Now they want to stop it. Oh, but this Indoraptor, they created it. They want to sell it. Okay, but they want to stop that because it's dangerous. Life will find a way, yada, yada. They get terrorized inside a big mansion in London. Becomes a whole thing. Stormy night. Ooh, boogie to boogie. Um, And then uh, people die. And uh, Chris Pratt and Redhead Lady somehow find a way to survive. Indoraptor dies in some magnificent fashion. Um, there you go. There's your movie, folks. It's over. Watch the previews and listen to my narration. It's over. <laughs> so good. Because like the first trailer oh, we oh, saw. Hold on. I, for- I forgot the best part. Oh, all right. Just cut me Chris off like Pratt's- normal. I'm sorry. Chris Pratt's pet dog, Blue, helps fight the Indoraptor on command, eats treats from his hand, licks his face. I'm sorry. I... I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, I I think like the first trailer, I remember seeing it and thinking like, oh, like that's only from the first third of the movie. Cool. I don't really know what else is going on. And they kind of showed like a little too much. And now they're showing like way too much. And it just kind of bums me out. But I will say this, though. Every time I hear that stupid line, and I hope they don't put it in the movie of Jeff Goldblum saying, welcome to Jurassic World. I'm like, ah, like it just, it just, I get, I get the idea. I understand it's like a callback, but at the same time, like Jurassic Park is a movie that constantly reminds you that you're watching the movie Jurassic Park because they have like all the the gear and they got it on the side of the jeeps and everywhere. It's like Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park. But anyway, that's the name of the place. It's just like if you do that now and and you, and you do that in a courtroom scene, it's just like oh boy or whatever. Like it just oh buddy, like that's that's gonna be rough. That's that's gonna be rough. Anyway. We're not talking about that. I don't know. We always get back to Jurassic. We always do. We have such a gripe with that uh, franchise. We just can't not talk about it. But it was a big deal, and it still will probably do very well in the box office. But not Infinity War. Well, I'm just saying one Avenger or Guardian of the Galaxy fighting a thing that can open doors is not as intimidating as Thanos. That's all I'm just trying to say. say Anyway, anyway. Joe, other bit of news. This has kind of been rumored for a while, and I know you're going to be so excited about this. Okay. Potential Pokemon theme park like section coming to Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. Now, Joe, I want you to think about Pokemon for a second, just for one second. Think about if you could make a ride, what would you make? But guess what? It's not going to be as good as mine. It's a mountain, and you are in 
a roller coaster, but it's an, in the shape of an onyx, right? And it's using dig and rock slide. It's going all over the mountain, and there's other rock type Pokemon. There's like some golem rolling down the hill towards you, and you're just like, whoa, I'm on an onyx. I'm just kind of going around. It's not, they won't make anything that intense, but how cool would that be? Am I right? Onyx roller coaster? Like, I don't, I don't know what you call it, but um, I just think this is a great idea. So, Joe, I want you to pitch me a Pokemon. Yeah, I'm pitching it. Okay. It's one of those rides. What's the haunted house one at Disney and you ride in that like revolving cart and you shoot the bad ghosts and stuff? Uh, you're kind of mixing a few rides together here. Yeah, so. I'm blurring a couple together. <laughs> yeah, there's sure. one where you ride through and you shoot the ghosts. That's actually at the Mall of America, I think. And it's called like that haunted blaster one because like Haunted Mansion and Disney World, they don't like give you guns. They're like, all right, go take care of this. <laughs> you're like, yeah, I got it. Uh, 999 happy on. So there's only going to be like three when I'm done, you know. <laughs> that would be kind of sick, though, honestly. Like, it I would. Would. <laughs> well said. So here's my idea. You're on a slower moving roller coaster. Speeds up now and again, you know, kind of, you know, kind of, kind of whipping you through. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of like a, it's a giant indoor ride, right? Dark to light, dark to light, water to land, trees to desert, kind of going through different environments and facades, right? Coasting through there. And, and in each area, there's all these different Pokemon types. Do we say animatronics or holographics or some holograms? I prefer <laughs> the animatronics personally because yeah. I want to see that be intense. Yeah. You know? So you're going through and you've got this, uh, you got this rifle, and on the end of it, <laughs> <laughs> and on the end of it, you've got an RPG missile, grenade, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you see a Pokemon, you shoot it. No, you shoot a, th- a Pokeball. How about that? Or you try to trank him or something? No, what I was really going to go with, but I saw the absurdity written across your face, and I was <laughs> like, yeah, i got to keep this going. No, um, yeah, I'd like, you know, a toy rifle, laser rifle type deal with a Pokeball on the end of it, so it's like you're catching all the Pokemon. But it's kind of – it's not like they're out fully in the open, and it's kind of – you got to have a – there's a difficulty to catching them. And you have to hit them in a certain spot, maybe. Okay. Um, for the larger ones, you have to like hit them right in the perfect spot and at the perfect moment. Otherwise, you don't get them. Um, you know, Charizard at the last one. You know, you turn the corner and he's got his back towards you. But then as he spins, he kind of gets covered up by a bush, and you had to shoot him in the upper right shoulder, just above the freckle at the scapula okay. and, uh, no i don't know just something like that it'd be kind of cool where it's a little more interactive you know and you, you can feature more of them and that sort of thing and if it was real long like it was just tight kind of tight corridors that wind back and forth that would be neat um taking it through different environments but yeah i like that idea what if instead we just give everybody in these cards like 20 little like foam Pokeballs, like tiny little Pokeballs. And you have to throw it at the Pokemon. And then when it hits them, it makes that big light flash and all that stuff. But that's happening so frequently because people are just whipping these balls up. So like, you don't know what's happening. It's like strobe lights coming at you the whole time, like Pokemon was intended to be. I just you... throw them at the car in front of me. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like, I'm going to catch you. Uh yeah, man, I, I think the idea for a Pokemon, you know, theme park isn't like a crazy one. And I'm sure I think I've seen like shots of like a, a Dumbo style ride that looks like you're in a Pikachu instead of like an elephant or Dumbo, which is fine. I just think there's so many ideas that you could really have fun with, especially going, like you said, through the different lands and seeing different Pokemon in their natural habitat. Maybe you do like a Jungle Cruise thing where you like go through a bunch of natural habitats on like a river. and you get That to see would them. be cool. Maybe that that's be- better than like a big indoor ride. Maybe make it a water ride. And instead of a uh, Onyx, it's a Lapras. Oh, um, Joe. Oh. That's really good. Oh, oh man. That's a really good that one. Stuff. That's what I want. Or if it has to be like a longer ride vehicle, you make it like a Gyarados. You know what I mean? Like people are just like sitting on it two okay. by twos, you know, because okay. like a Lapras. I like the Lapras idea, but like you put 60 people like on a Lapras. 60 people? 
Well, I don't know if you're trying to put like four at a time and then you just send them. You got to be quick. No, I'm thinking like groups of eight at the most. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like oh, one geez. of those round deals and it kind of spins around. So it's not like you <laughs> always have the shot at the one you want. Core Lapras is just like, <laughs> it's like it can't control itself in the water. It's just like going. It's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, you've I mean, seen those rides before, right? Like I think oh, Six yeah. Flags even had one and it's just a circular almost tube. But it's you know got a basin in the middle and uh, handles a whole lot too. Well, believe it or not, Joe, I was on a ride and just put out a video about it. And my re- my previous vlog I just did. You can go, you can go watch it. You watch me get drenched. It's great. It's fun. Those it kind of rides much. are horrible. Uh, it ha- this one has like two drops in it too, and it's really cool because at the time I don't know if they've since changed this somewhere else, but. It, there was never another ride that like spun you fully right before the drop. So like the last drop, what it'll do is like it catches you, and then before you go, it like spins you out of it. So then you're like going down this drop, like spinning around. It's pretty intense on a water ride. I was just thinking more of just like a boat ride. You kind of go through; it could be kind of calm, and then you could have some water Pokemon like in the water, like they kind of pop up their heads. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. kind of like the Jurassic Park ride a little bit, yeah. where they kind of got the little side pools. I'd have Professor Oak coming through the speakers. Who's like, oh, he's like, look at this. Um, and he'd be like, oh, God, who's that? <laughs> he's like, oh, uh, it's Team Rocket. Um, that's horrible. Oak, it was like, okay. And then it got real bad. I'm so sorry. I'll have to work on my Professor Oak. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. I would take For that. Team Rocket, they give you baseball bats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, that's just like a little bit of news. There wasn't anything super crazy this week, just because, you know, like we're getting in the throes of the summer. And that's what I really want to talk about here. We got a lot of stuff. I got some news for you. Oh, I got some news. Oh, I got some news for you. New Predator trailer comes out tomorrow. Really? I was going to mention that at the very end of all this. uh, It comes out September 14th, I think. The actual movie itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It'd, be, it'd be pretty bold if they're like, no, we'll save the trailer. And they're like, uh, the announcement was tomorrow. And they're like, you just wait a couple months, baby. It's going to be worth it. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I, I tell you, uh, obviously, I should reserve my hypometer for when I've seen the trailer. But I was going to ask you what your hypometer was on Predator right now, anyway, because I, I know it kind of fluctuates with us a little just bit. Just know there's a, pri- a Predator movie coming, and uh, Olivia Munn's in it. I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it a strong eight and a half right now. As soon as I see a little more, I'll, uh, you know, maybe give her a plus or minus a point or two. Who else is it? I think Thomas Jane is in it too, and he was like uh, the Punisher from like the 2007 or 8 movie. I like Thomas Jane. Uh, that guy, the, the blonde guy. No, 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 not the blonde guy. He's got, like, brown hair. He fights a big blonde guy in that. Anyway. He's got, like, sandy blonde hair. Family yeah, guys. Sh- yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, I, yeah, I'd probably say I'm, like, eight, 80, 85 degrees on that. I I just like Predator a lot, and I'd like to see what they do with it, because I know, Joe, you've always loved Xenomorph. You, Joe's always been the Xenomorph to my Predator. He's been the Superman to my Batman. Uh, and maybe that's just, you'll see right there, it's just, like, xenomorph and superman it's all about like the natural talent typically it's like just they're <laughs> powerful things just by themselves my guys usually have like a little bit of natural talent but then also like come just like fully teched out like they're like ready to go and that's why i like the predator because like once he throws down with you it's terrifying like that's the scariest predator is but before that he's like stalking you invisibly and he's just like picking you off with like weapons you've never even seen which I like. I'm like, I want to make that a better game. They've made old games, make a new game. Ghost Recon, what are you guys doing? Um, sorry, just I think about that. Just like make a Ghost Recon, but just put Predator in there and you're killing people as a Predator. Uh, all right, anyway. Dude. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're still for Predator. Well, um, we're both reaching for the AC. Reaching yeah. for the thermostat. Yeah, yeah dude, I want to, oh, I would love to see that with you. Be like, yeah. Joe, Joe, Predator, Joe, Predator. Uh, anyway. Anyway, okay, we're moving on. We're moving on, Joe, which is, you know, kind of segues into what we're going to talk about. Speaking about reaching for the AC, flawless segue. Talking about the things that are coming up this summer, not just movies, but games as well. Just there's a few of them here and there. So I want to touch base, kind of tell people what's coming, just in case you've forgotten, because if you go see, like, Infinity War, you'll see, like, 20 trailers in front of it, and you'll be like, oh, my God, what? How am I supposed to remember all these movies? Don't worry. We're here. Now, Joe, do you want to take a stab at like what the first movie coming out at, like after this recording, the next big one's gonna be? Do you have any guesses? It might be superhero related. 
I looked at the list at one point. I looked at the list at one point. <laughs> That's. I feel like Joe, you're not on trial here, man. He said, I looked at the list at one point. <laughs> like that's what he said. It's at one point he looked at the list. Uh, you can't look at the list, Joe. Just take a guess. Take a guess. Don't think about it too hard. He's a superhero that oh, a lot of yeah, people. Deadpool, are. Deadpool, yeah, Deadpool, Deadpool. Yeah. Yeah. Deadpool, Joe. Are you excited about Deadpool? Uh, I mean, I know it'll be good. It'll be funny, but. It doesn't have a lot of meaning behind it. Sure. And that's May 18th. Uh, yeah, that's... I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I'll probably see it. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to review that one. I'm not sure I'll have time. I'm kind of busy around then, but we'll see. I remember seeing the first one, and I actually wrote a review for it. We just never made, but I liked it. I just never really was like excited to go back to it. I think it's it's like any other comedy. You really have to see it with people that you enjoy being in their company, you know, and that's like, they laugh and we all laugh together. True. But yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of one of those things. It kind of reminds me of like, if movies could be kids in a classroom, like Deadpool is easily like the class clown and like the class clown is fun to watch and is very funny from time to time. But like for two hours of it or two and a half hours, it's like, I don't know. It's just I like my, my superhero movies to be a little bit more serious with like some comedy littered in, you know, as opposed to being like a complete joke the entire time. Because when there aren't any stakes in a superhero movie or there aren't a feeling of stakes, and I'm not just talking about like good meat, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, no, nobody. OK, anyway, uh, it just it, it loses it for me. But are you going to see Deadpool 2, do you think, in theaters, Joe? Uh, if I'm bored and have the time. Um... I will, but we'll see. Yeah, fair enough. Next one that comes out after that is one that weirdly apparently is kind of uh, just broke another record. It actually beat out Black Panther for Fandango, I guess, like pre-order tickets. But that is Solo, a Star Wars story coming out May 25th. I feel like this movie is going to do really well. Like a lot of people were kind of down on it. I think it's going to be fun, but I don't think uh, anybody expected it or is expecting it to show very well how about you joe how do you feel about it because i know you're not a huge star wars guy but maybe this one would appeal to you a little bit i think everybody's going to all the game of thrones fans are going to buy tickets because they want to see amelia clark and something else <laughs> uh amelia well you could say that about what was it like terminator genesis or whatever but like that i don't know if that was the case or, or what not. yeah i don't know that was be i don't even yeah whatever yeah uh but anyway so solo how do you how do you how are you feeling about it currently um i don't care one way or another me me would you see it if unprompted if you saw a trailer for it you're standing in the movie theater and you're like what should i see and you saw a trailer for it would you be like "Hmm, maybe no because i how so let's look what's coming in so may that's at the very end of May. Yep, that's why we're doing this sequential order. Because then focuses on one at a time. That chronological. It's good. No. There's actually I quite a few movies coming on May, but I... We only picked the best ones, Joe. And by the best ones, I mean the ones that I personally liked. Or are I don't know. What is it about? It's about his, his origin story, man. About being a smuggler. He's going to go as a big heist. It's a big, I don't know. I don't really care about his backstory either. I just think it's going to be fun. You know, it's going to have a budget, which I really like to see. Because like, if I'm going to see a movie, I, you know, I like to, I like to know that there's actually like money put into it. I know that might sound a little shallow, but I like to, you know, get to see for the spectacle. I want it to be like kind of a big deal. So it's got yeah. Star Wars there. I'll, I'll probably see Deadpool before I see that. Okay. Fair enough. How about this? Let's go into June. How do you feel about. The Incredibles 2. Incredibles 2. Uh, uh, probably won't see it. You're killing me! Uh, I forget what day that actually comes out. I think it's June 8th. I'm pretty sure it's June 8th. Pretty positive. Or no, it's, um, it's, it's the 15th here? I don't know. Anyway, I don't care what Joe says about this. I am super stoked because it's the best Pixar franchise in my mind. Uh, I, I just like it because, you know, Pixar movies make you cry. They want to make you cry. Incredibles is like one of the best superhero stories. It's like better than Fantastic Four. And I, I just really enjoy it. I really, it's going to be fun. It's going to be punchy. There's going to be a little bit of heart in there too. And it's going to look great. 
super stoked for it. Joe, there's got to be something in you that's like, maybe, maybe I would see this film. I mean, the trailer was kind of like, oh, that's funny. You know, chuckle, okay. I'll sit next to some old guys the other night at the movie theater, and they were getting a big kick out of uh, Robert Parr, I think is the Mr. Incredible. And he's like, math is math. Math is math. when he's trying to teach Dash about Yeah, like I that. thought that was pretty funny. I do like how they kind of relate to pop culture and the real world and, yeah, and man, real life scenarios, but that's the best thing about them is like they're relatable like they're just people and they're just like yeah man just trying to live their life and now he's like a stay-at-home dad and stuff it's great it's just it's just flipping flipping the bloody movie franchise on its head man just doesn't even care question though coming out i think this is the same weekend oceans 8 is coming out on june 8th now for people who don't know or maybe you're slightly familiar with the oceans franchise oceans 11 12 and 13 was a trilogy starring George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon, and a bunch of other people talking about a group of people who went and stole a bunch of money from a couple of casinos and then the years following that. Now we're following Danny, George Clooney's character, Danny Ocean's little sister, who is going to take a bunch of uh, cons that aren't necessarily related to that other job, but going to go try to steal a $150 million diamond necklace from Anne Hathaway. I have mixed feelings, uh, and I know Joe might not even have any mixed feelings towards this at all, but is there any part of you, Joe, that likes a heist movie? Do you, do you enjoy like that? You just watched Logan Lucky recently. Do you, do you feel like this is something you'd be interested in? Yeah, I, mean, I suppose it's interesting. Um, Rihanna's in it, too. Jeez, oh, Pete. Yeah, mostly the money is spent on the cast. Kate Blanchett, man, that's the reason I want to see it. I don't want to see it for Sandra Bullock or anybody else. I just want to see Kate Blanchett, my girl. Hella coming back now. Oh, uh, that's who that is. I was like, I don't have a clue who that is. Yeah, man, she's great. I I just really uh, I really like her. But yeah, I don't know if have you seen. I don't know if you've seen any information on this. I know we've maybe talked about it in the past, but it's something that I just rewatched. Oceans Eleven, Twelve, and Thirteen. I really like Eleven. I'm not a huge fan. I don't really like Twelve at all, and I Thirteen's okay. Uh, I don't understand. Like this is coming out June eighth, and there hasn't been a single trailer for it. Oh, no, there have been plenty. There's been two or three trailers out for it uh, beforehand. Like I said, unless I... I just don't see them on TV. They must just rely on YouTube these days. I don't know. Well, the thing is, I don't... The budgeting for it, it's not the same as, like, you know, when Marvel or Star Wars or something comes out, they, like, throw the budgeting marketing, and there's like, ah! Uh, But anyway, uh, Ocean's 8, Joe. What do you think, man? Would you see it? Would you go and hang out? Would you you go have a good time with with the ladies and watch, watch them steal some stuff? I think there are some other movies I would rather see. For example, Upgrade. What is Upgrade? Not Man, Not Machine. I think that's that one. What is it? Sounds real good. (laughs) No, I've just seen the trailers. I don't quite know what it's about and hence why it's intriguing. Um, paralyzed in a freak mugging accident. Uh, but when a billionaire technologist offers him an experimental paralysis cure and implanted computer chip called STEM, Gray finds that the chip has a voice and a mind of its own. And I'm pretty sure, uh, rated R for strong violence, grisly images and language. Apparently there's something like he, he like interfaces with things and has like these kind of powers based on that i don't know watch the trailer people so it sounds like a venom ripoff is what you're telling me right now no it's much uh different i think maybe i'm looking Mm. at the wrong movie i'm actually checking the trailer right now um oceans eight okay well um we'll, we'll, we'll move away from oceans eight but we'll i'm gonna say one last thing before we get more into upgrade talk i might see it who knows like i said i like a heist movie I like the Oceans franchise. I think there's a really good chance George Clooney is going to show up in this, even though they say he's dead. That's what it says in the trailers, anyway. It shows him. Who knows? Who knows? I just, I'm, I'm not sure. They keep doing this um, sort of thing, and I, I can see where people have a complaint where it's like, oh, it's kind of like what they did with Ghostbusters. They just get like an all female cast instead. I understand though, from a marketing standpoint, that they using a name and using it as like a sequel or prequel or whatever it is to um, that other stuff, which this one would technically, I think, be a sequel. It just makes sense from a marketing standpoint. So I don't really care. Go for it. I just want to see Kate Blanchett steal some stuff. That's all I care about, Joe. 
Did you find any more on Upgrade Man? I've never heard of this thing. Not so. the movie I thought it was. All right, see, we're, Joe, this is why you got to let me take care of this, man. You just you just focus oh, on me. And... The movie Superfly looks really cool. What is Superfly? Uh, it's about some like crime boss in Atlanta. Um, I'm not going to explain it much more. Look at the trailer. It, it's pretty... It's pretty intense. It looks well done. Um, but I actually got caught watching the trailer last night on a YouTube ad, and I was about to hit skip, and I was like, huh, wow, intense, crazy. And it was, it was kind of neat. It looked like it was uh, really well done for the type of movie it is. Sure. June 22nd, Joe. Take a guess why that day is important. Because uh, it's my birthday. Besides that, Joe, we <laughs> all know it's your birthday. Oh, because Chris Pratt does his dog show. <laughs> you know, the sad thing is, he's so popular. If he did a dog show, it would get tons of views. Like, he for sure would get tons. It wouldn't even matter what dog it was. But anyway, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is what we're alluding to. It comes out June 22nd. Uh, and that pretty much does it for June, which we already talked about that, which is great. Two big movies in July, Joe. Another superhero movie. Take a guess. It's Marvel, if that helps you. Yeah, Ant Man and the Wasp. Very good. Friday, July sixth, which means we have a July fourth on a Wednesday. Which, if you're here in America, it's usually a holiday. I mean, it is. Yeah, um, it's not some years that they just take it off. I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be a nice uh, kind of palate cleanser after Infinity War. Kind of something fun and light. And <laughs> what? No, you continue. Oh, sorry. Uh, what I will say with this though. It's unlike Deadpool, if a lot of people be like, well, Jimmy, you just said you didn't like, like, kind of joking the whole time. This movie is definitely going to be more lighthearted and fun, and I think it'll have way more jokes. But it's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be constant, and there'll still be some really kind of cool things in there, too. And also, they won't be breaking the fourth wall probably too much. So, yeah. Plus, I like Evangeline Lilly in this movie, and that's good because she needs redemption after The Hobbit for me, because that was horrible, and she would probably agree with me. Anyway, Joe, what were we going to say now? <laughs> so are you sure instead of seeing ant-man and the wasp you wouldn't rather go see the first purge yeah i saw that was on there and i like tried to look it up earlier and i was like oh it's, it's so it's like a prequel to the other purge movies right <laughs> like the first one they've ever done like that is just it's so funny to me that like the purge is taken off, you know, because it's like was done on a budget, and then it just like if kind of a horror suspense thing does well enough, they'll just make like a thousand of them, you know. Yeah, but I haven't they're easy to make, cheap to make. Yeah, I haven't watched the other ones though. Uh, Joe, are you? Would you be interested in seeing the first purge? I don't. know, It sounds like you're you're hopping on board that train. I've never seen any of the purge movies, and um, it's just interesting. I think they're. I think they're being a little political with it because there's a picture, the movie poster is a picture of a red, which you would imagine from a distance is a red make America great again hat, but it's oh. actually, it says the first purge on it instead of make America great again. <sighs> I'd rather see Hotel Political Transylvania statement. 3 Summer Vacation, which comes out Friday, July 13th. We have another July, Friday the 13th. Perfect. That's, that's my favorite day. Oh, we just had one, and it was such a good day for me. Uh, you, know um, what, you know what I'm going to see? I'm going to roll through these. I'm not trying to rush anything. I just, I'm I excited got, about throw this one. I was, I was the one who's, okay, what's, what are you excited about? Is it a skyscraper? Well, hold on. <laughs> Is that the one with the rock? Am I wrong? The rock. He's missing half of his leg from the knee down. He's a security guard, and he goes there to consult and says, you have all these issues. You must fix them around. Oh, and then guess what? There's a security breach, terrorist-type deal, and he's trying to take him out. He's jumping from one building to the next and then back again. It's a whole thing. Yeah, I just don't get it. I just want him to have a missile in his foot called a tow missile that would double as a tow <laughs> missile. Yeah, can't... it's not as big toe like you would think. It's, it's a pinky toe, toe for sure, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, you know what looks like a cool movie because I know that the first one was is the Equalizer. This is the Equalizer two. Have you I, seen, you saw the first one? I saw the first one in theaters, like what back in thirteen or fourteen. And it was actually pretty good. And Denzel Washington, I mean, come on. And um, I'm surprised they're making a second one. I didn't think it did well enough, but okay, I'm game. 
I'll yeah. watch it. For anyone who has ever watched, it's kind of like a John Wick style thing. Yeah. But he's also really bad at telling time. He's like 18 seconds. And then he'll do something like 15 seconds or something. And he's like, oh, I was wrong. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I think he's a good actor. And that movie was fine. I have no real problem with it. It's just like, yeah, you're right. They are making a sequel to that. I think it's because what you do is you take a movie with action that's realistic with a big name star on a relatively lower budget. And then that's how you make some money. I feel like that's just a good way to do it. And I feel like that's what they sure. keep doing with The Rock, to be honest with you. If there were any other actor, those movies would be on sci-fi. Like, they wouldn't put the money oh, into it. Sure. The Rock's yeah. in it. Every movie he's in is on the big screen. Every movie. The man is in, like, so many movies. It's like, huh. Everybody likes the guy. He's good. I know, but that doesn't mean all of his movies are good. So, before we get to the creme de la creme, let's cover Teen Titans Go to something teen titans go to the movies uh okay so teen titans was a great cartoon show back in the day it was a little edgy a little dark it was a little too much for kids for the most part there's some kind of cute ones too but then they rebooted it a few years back because that show got canceled and then they booted it until it's kind of like i don't know it's like chibi or whatever it's kind of cute like wacky kind of cartoon stuff and now they're making a movie of it it's going to be the theaters, and it's like it drives me nuts that that is doing way better than the original Teen Titans. It drives me crazy. Um, so it's like the same animations, same characters, but different style. It's the same voice actors and the same characters, kind of, but a completely different style. So if I had to, it's it, so it's hard. It's cute to... and nice as opposed to, I don't know. I thought in the movie, uh, I think I saw the trailer too on YouTube, and it was. Uh... It seemed kind of funny. I'm sure it'll be funny. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the style, like the actual cartoon drawn style is much more. It's just more like kind of fun. And it's it's not like they they don't look like real anything. It looks like pure cartoon stuff. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It just bums bums me out, man. Like I wouldn't see that in a movie theater. That's the problem. Like I just like, but I know other people will. I'm sure you take your kids to it, but. It's kind of like in the same ballpark as like the Captain Underpants movie. I'm like, why would I go to a movie theater to watch this? Yeah. Uh, again, I'll be taking theory. my kids to movies like The Conjuring and <laughs> The Exorcist Part 2. Every time they're bad, you're like, we're going to go see a little movie together. Uh, no, not the movie theater. No, please, Dad, no. <laughs> I don't know. I just miss the old Teen Titans. And that's the thing I'm like the saddest about. I'm sure people will like it. And again, it's not for me. Like they didn't make this movie like, for like oh, yes, yes. A mid to late 20s, you know, male would love this. You know, I'm not. I don't. Can we talk about the creme de la creme of July yet? Please, Joe. It's our favorite. Get to it. It's Mission Impossible. Which is Mission Impossible 6? <laughs> Uh, okay, so Mission Impossible Fallout. Here's the reason why you should be excited about it. Just watched Mission Impossible Rogue Nation the other night, which I plan on doing a commentary for. That's the fifth one in the entire franchise. It's number five. If you're like, Jimmy, how does it work? Mission Impossible 1, 2, and 3, pretty straightforward. And then when they jumped to 4, instead of saying 4, they just moved right into like the subtitle thing. So it's Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, and now we've got Mission Impossible Fallout. The cool thing about this one, about these uh, last three, is that they've kind of tied together in little ways, and this one, I think, in a much major way. Now, if you didn't watch Rogue Nation, spoiler alert for you, but the villain that you see in the trailer for this is the main villain of that previous film. And that's a really cool tie-in because it's like this guy was kind of a big deal. So seeing that move forward, plus you got your boy, Joe, you got Henry Cavill, Mr. Superman, just like getting ready. He's thrown down. He's ready to punch. With he's a mustache. Ready. Looking with a, all like a man's man. Look With a mustache. And they're bringing back uh, the female or the British spy from the last one. Her name is like uh, Is- Isla Faust or something. It was cool to have her come back because she had an interesting relationship with Ethan in the past one. Even though Ethan still has a wife out there in the world that they established in Mission Possible 3. And the best part about it, my boy. Tommy Cruise. I don't care what people say. Yes, I can imagine that you think that he was kind of crazy. I probably agree with you on some extent, but it's like you have to be kind of nuts to strap yourself to the side of a plane and take off four or five times and land four or five times. The guy like took a rock, like there's a like a pebble that hit him and like went into his shoulder. Like 
that's nuts. Like that is that's commitment to the bit, man. And I just like watching this guy work. I really believe it. The guy is like a really good actor. And it's mostly practical effects. Like that he's actually doing this stuff. I, I just really appreciate it. I'm just excited. And there's the budget. Good cast, Simon Pegg, Ving Rames, Jeremy Renner, Alec Baldwin. Come on. Come on. Joe, come on. Get hype with me. Let's, let's, let's do this. How does he survive T-boning that car with a motorcycle? Okay, here's the thing. You have to realize that in this world, it's kind of similarly to like Fast and Furious, that he is not a regular person anymore. <laughs> like, he no, does. I know. I'm just kidding. My uncle T-boned a car with a motorcycle. He survived. Sure. It just didn't feel good. He was hurt pretty bad. But he'll take hits and he'll actually feel them. Like if he hurts himself in the movies, like his he like Ethan feels it. He's not like immune to pain. Like I just I just really Sucks like it. to be him. And this might be his last like Mission Impossible, maybe. Oh, you would have to imagine unless they do something to segue it into a younger Ethan Hunt. Like this is my son. Oh, I always my dream role in Hollywood would to be his protege in one of these last movies, <laughs> and then like be like, I'll never do anything as nuts as my mentor. And they'd be like, Jimmy, we we have to like in Mission Impossible Seven, you have to jump out of like a spacecraft or something. Maybe uh, Ethan Hunt makes friends with Henry Cavill's character in the end. Like you don't think it's gonna happen, but in the end they become friends. Henry Cavill takes over Ethan Hunt's slot. Um, he's the guy now. If you Henry's a dead man. Have. Henry's a dead man in this movie. He's a, he's a dead man. I'm sorry, man. It's going to be a fantastic fashion. Um, probably killed by Blue. Wouldn't it be pretty great if like some weird thing like Tom Cruise like, hey, Blue, and then Velociraptor came and it just took him out. And you're like, whoa. <laughs> the movies, all the movies just started crossing over. Uh, yeah. Ridiculous. Anyway, I'm excited. I can't wait. I can't, that's at the end of July. What an interesting time to put that. But I hope it crushes it because it doesn't really have much competition um, after that. The last thing that we could bring up in August, I mean, there's a lot of things we could bring up. Uh, I know Joe wouldn't care about this, but Disney's Christopher Robin, which I think is going to do really, really well. Uh, it's going <laughs> to do well. That's the thing. These live action Disney movies do really well. And plus, I freaking love Ewan McGregor. I think if like my my some of my family members wanted to see it, I, I'd go with them. I, I like I like Winnie the Pooh School. Also, The Meg or The Megalodon featuring Jason Satham. And Rain Wilson basically having to take down, take down a gigantic shark. Joe, feelings on the Meg. Dude, I saw the trailer for it. It looks absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it looks like a crazy old, crazy James Bondy weirdness, insanity. No, it yeah. looks like it belongs on sci fi movie, but. Yeah, sci-fi TV, but whatever. Jaws, James Bond, kind of. Yeah, you're right. It does. Some of these movies are kind of getting a little bit out of hand. Uh, and two other things I did want to mention before we completely moved on from the summer and all the fun stuff here. Two games that are coming out, uh, both in June. Vampire or Vampire, which uh, the name I still can't remember. Joey talked about this one. It's one where you play as a a doctor in London, like turn of the century England or something, or 1920s England or something like that. And you have to decide if you're going, you get turned to a vampire, you have to decide if you're going to kill innocent people to get stronger or try to avoid doing that and live your life through this game. Which I thought would be, I think it's a really cool idea for a game and I'm excited to try it out. Plus like there aren't really like a lot of great vampire games out there where you play as a vampire. I know some people be like Castlevania. Uh, but yeah, Joe, I don't know. I think you'd I think you dig this game a bit. I know you'd go full, like, like I probably will, like, full villain, and just, like, any person you see, you'd probably just be like, yep, I'm going to I'm gonna drink your blood. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, it'd be all over. But I'd be selective about it, not just anybody, you know. <laughs> you know, they'd have to be clean and all that. Like, I'm not a monster. How do you judge if somebody's clean? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, that's why vampires probably drink the blood of pretty girls, because pretty girls. Because what? Oh, we lost Joe. See, this is what happens when you when you just you just you never know what's gonna happen on this show. He, he's gonna he's gonna show up and then he's gonna vanish. I don't I don't even know. Did he forget to plug in his charger? That's the question. Here's the other real question. Will I edit this out? Who knows? He's back. Joe, welcome back. What did you do? I don't know. 
Hi. <laughs> See, it's like you got to pay attention because it'll just shut you down. If, if it doesn't like what you're saying, it's like, are you going to drink the blood of pretty girls? All right. Yes, we're, done. <laughs> we're done here. Is, is that where it left off? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it reminds me of one of my favorite episodes of Frasier where he goes on the air to talk about that he's got this moral quandary of doing this thing, and they cut him off, like, what's the last thing I said? And he says, I am not a man, and then it just cuts, because he's supposed to say, I'm not a man who bows this. It's super duper good. So it's like, that's all we got. It's great. It's perfect. It's how we can soundbite that. <laughs> Send it to me. So, as I was saying, you know, it's probably probably why vampires tend to drink the blood of pretty girls, right, or women, because uh, they they exude the whole um, primped and proper, well manicured and, and clean, right? Um, so yeah, I guess that'd probably be victim number one. I want that sounds kind of serial killer esque. Yeah, don't. It? Yeah, I would say I, for you, I, what I picture is you're like an elitist vampire that only goes after like the super wealthy. And then people are like, "Hey, if you're ever really hungry, why don't you just like kill a hobo?" And you're like, oh, "Never!" Like you know, like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen their diet? <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, well, you'd also be British, so you'd be like, "Well, I would never do such a thing," you know. And you go run into the streets like this. That's that's what I'd do. I'd be I'd have a Cockney accent. I'd be like your your friend. I'd be like, oh, sir, it's whatever I can get. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'd have a what would I have? I'd have a redneck accent, a vampire with you know, a redneck you can't, accent. You're in London, you can't be like. You can't a redneck. <laughs> is there is there a British redneck? <laughs> I can't even try to do it. Come on, man, try. Well, what's the redneck say? Like, <laughs> uh, darn down, too. <laughs> da, we'll, we'll get him down by the watering hole. Like, you can't even, like, it's just, you can't even, it's too much. It's too much. <laughs> I, I'd have a redneck accent. Like, you know, I mean, we're not like superheroes or something. It's not like you're picking the suit or the machine you get. Dude, you're like, cool. I'd have you a gotta admit, If you're a vampire, that is probably one of the coolest superpowers. I mean, you know. Welcome. Redneck accent? <laughs> no. <laughs> Being a vampire, period. Compulsion, all that good stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Strength, I don't know. Speed. Also, in this game, you do have to be invited into people's houses. So maybe if you killed everybody, people would be like, you can't let you in the house, which is kind of a cool thing that they don't play well, with. Well, if they don't know I did it. Yeah. I've I'd always thought like, there's got to be a way around that. Yeah. It could be me. It could not be me. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, might I just want to come over for dinner. <laughs> yeah, because we've definitely been invited. For our audio only listeners, he did the creepiest looking face he possibly could. <laughs> With his mouth agape. Uh, yeah. yeah it's freaky, freaky. I just want a vampire versus werewolf video headache. game. Vampires, werewolves, it makes itself. Anyway, I would love that. I'm hoping Vampire is good. No, I, I like the idea of maybe a little bit open world, but like narratives. So I, I don't know. So it's kind of story driven. Yeah, it seems that way, but it seems like they're, I don't know if they're like open world environments, but it seems like it's much bigger. It's from the people who did Life is Strange, which is very story focused, but that makes I think sense. it'd be cool. I think it'd be cool. That, that would be cool. It'd be like playing, it'd be like uh, playing Vampire Diaries the game. Yeah, exactly. And that comes out uh, on PS4, Xbox One, and PC on June 5th. And then on the 12th on PC, PS4, and Xbox One is Jurassic World Evolution, which to be honest, I do have a passing fancy and interest in that game. I like the old roller coaster tycoon games. That's the people who are making it, and kind of building a park with Jeff Goldblum constantly talking to you. I think that would be fun, Joe. What do you What do you think, man? Do you feel like that would be that be a good time? Wait, there? What's the game again? The dinosaur, the Jurassic Park one. Jurassic World Evolution. Mm-hmm. Build and run a park, Joe. You'd love it. You'd be like, well, we got to get power over this one. The Spinosaurus is gonna get out. You know, like that. Like it'd be a lot of that. Kill it! Kill it with fire! I just don't know why Jeff Goldblum's character would be cool with being like your your buddy, you know? Because I always felt like he was like against dinosaurs in general to being being around. So yeah, well, I'd feed him to the dinosaurs right away. No more narration. That would be a really cool and funny thing if you could do that. If you just could like pick him up in the world and just drop him in a pit and be like, and he'd be like, ah, oh, life found a way. <laughs> <laughs> Great. See, they need to put more freedom in the games. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you could turn them off, maybe. I think I don't know. Probably got it right. Yeah. Kill Which what one? you want, do what you want, when you want, how you want. 
I'm just saying, I think it'd be a fun game. I'd rather play it on PC because those management games typically seem yeah. to fare better. Yeah, on the next box, all those options and menus. Yeah. And do you want to buy this to get him in there? You want to build that? You have this many Z points if you want to build this. Okay. Uh, click, click. Oh, great. Yeah. Would you like to name your dinosaur? Oh, I got to go buy one of those keyboards, you know? <laughs> Joe's like, this game is basically work. I don't yeah, want to do it. This is worse than work. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what... Uh, they have, like, catastrophes in the game that can happen where, like, they'll break out or a tornado will come through. I just wonder, like, what it is to incentivize us to keep playing the game for long periods of time. If it's like, oh, you want to get to this point because once you get enough money, you can buy this other thing or buy this upgrade or... I don't know. I just think it'd be kind of cool. Those are, like, the bigger... There's not a lot of big summer games coming out, but those are the two to me that are most exciting. But there's a lot of other ones that are coming out, so don't worry. But like those to me, they're smaller games, and that's just kind of how summer works. Typically, movies kind of take over during the summer, and there isn't like a lot of big games. Typically in the spring and then in the fall, like especially October, November, that's when the biggest games tend to come out. Typically. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, there were a couple of movies that we skipped over. I saw Slender Man is now a, a big screen movie coming skip, out. Yep. I just... To my lose, skip, skip. I don't give a crap about that. Um, yeah, I just, I don't, I didn't even know it was gonna be a movie. Like, what, Slender Man? Like, yeah, dude, I don't know. Could be freaky. Yeah, yeah, it could be something. That's. Uh, you know, I'm just due for a good horror movie. And what's this? The Spy Who Dumped Me. I don't know. Mila I saw that Kunis. Time. They're it trying should. to create like a new modern Austin Powers. See, I would be more interested if someone just, like, the only thing they told me, they're like, all right, Mila Kunis is a spy, but she's trying to be the Mike Myers British version. She's like, <laughs> she just said, like, just uh, something. Kate about. McKinnon from Saturday Night Live's in there, so maybe she's playing that version of the character. Oh, maybe. Yeah. So, like, I don't care. Just don't. The film don't tells the story of Audrey, Mila Kunis, and Morgan, Kate McKinnon. 30-year-old best friends from Los Angeles who are unexpectedly thrust into an international conspiracy when Audrey's, continue on, uh, <laughs> ex-boyfriend Justin Thoreau shows up at her par apartment with a team of deadly assassins in his, on his trail. A typo on a web? Much to their own surprise, the duo jump into action and find themselves on the run in Europe from the assassins and a super suspiciously Charming British agent Sam Hogan, <laughs> as they hatch a plan to save the world. <gasps> wow. Yeah, see, when I didn't talk about that movie, there's usually legitimate reasons why I skip these things. Jokes. You actually read through that, huh? I didn't read through that. I just saw the title and I'm like, goodbye. Um, I'm sorry, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, folks. Um, Kung, Fu, Kung Fu Panda is the perfect example of that. That was going to be trash, but it was great. Well, yeah. here's one that's absolutely worth watching. It's, uh, holy crap, what is this? AXL, A New Adventure. What the freaking heck? Well, no, I don't even care if we're killing time here. We're, we're jumping right into the time kill. AXL is a new adventure okay. about a down on his luck teenage bike rider. And when they say bike rider, they mean motocross rider. Skip, skip, skip to the It's about a mo motocross rider, Miles, who stumbles upon an advanced robotic military dog named Axel, <laughs> endowed with next generation artificial intelligence, but with the heart of a dog. <laughs> Axel forms an emotional bond with Miles. <laughs> <laughs> much to the much to the chagrin of the rogue military chagrin. Chagrin. chagrin what the freaking hell is that word oh my gosh <laughs> of the rogue military scientists who created axel and would do anything to retrieve him knowing what it is no knowing what is at stake if axel gets captured miles teams up with his smart resourceful crush sarah Becky G to protect his new best friend. <laughs> Does the dog turn into a motorcycle? Dude, I don't know. It's kind of alien freaky looking. Um, it's just like oh, a yeah. robot. It's a very tall robotic dog. Yeah. Well. Weird. <laughs> All I saw was it. the cover, like the film poster looked like E.T., Except for it's got a motocross guy doing like a taunt look back, doing a whip in the moon. And then the dog is like jumping 
in the moon as well. <laughs> is the dog in front of him or behind him? Behind him, kind okay, of doing the same up. thing. It's so weird. He's, he's taunting uh, his cool new alien dog friend. Yeah, that movie oh probably won't do well. Well, I just that's fine. You know what? I kind of like you bringing something to the table here. I like you I like you kind of looking up and just reading these little things because it's it's fun because I learn a little bit about these movies that hopefully I'll never have to see, which is great. Uh, but Joe, yeah. before we get into Time Killers, I've got a little game for you that I set up. I set up a game just for you. And don't worry, everybody. It's spoiler free, uh, but it is actually... A Marvel Cinematic Universe quote game. Yes, because Marvel Cinematic Universe is uh, celebrating that 10 years. I was like, maybe we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll run Joe through the gambit. Gambit. Gam. Gauntlet. That's the word. Um, I got there. Mm. Eventually, found myself. Chagrin. Anyway, Joe, I will read you a specific quote. And you have to tell me which character from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, hero or villain, says it. Are you ready? Okay, ready. Okay, okay here we go. This one's a softball, but here you go. That's a secret, Captain. I'm always angry. Bruce Banner. Very good. This is only part of this quote, but I think it's the best part. I'm burdened with glorious purpose. Dun, dun, dun. I'm not going to put music in here. I'm going to just sing this song. I'm going to hum Ooh. it for you. I'm going to wait for that song. Tell me for you and for me. Boyfriends are yes, no, no. Is that Ultron? No, close. <laughs> it's, it's a villain. I am burdened with glorious purpose. Oh, God, I recognize that on the tip of my tongue. I don't know. Take a guess. Come on. Who's the only other villain? Like the, the only other only villain? Other villain like Thanos? the only real villain did Thanos say that no no it's not it's not it's not any in infinity or anything like that i mean technically it was in guardians but come on who's everybody's favorite villain loki yeah he says that in the first avengers i am burdened with glorious purpose no Mm. anyway okay activating instant kill (laughs) yeah spider-man homecoming Yep, very good. Uh, do you know her name? No, I, I don't know her name. Uh, her Catherine. Name. Clo- dude, Karen. Damn. Yeah, I mean, good yeah. job, dude. That's. I was like, I'll do this one. We'll see if he remembers. Because you liked Homecoming, right? Yeah, I thought it was good. I thought the best part was the suit. That's why I remember it. That's, I love that. <laughs> this is her chance, Peter. Kiss her now. Right? I'm just, just gone the moment. Woo! Yeah. Okay. I love activating against the kill. I like that the suit has an instant kill mode. Just like, I don't know. Yeah. He's like wait, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> and that Tony programmed it into a suit he was gonna give a teenager. Anyway, yeah. uh, here's one of my favorite quotes. I can do this all day. <laughs> I said that just this morning. Um as you sipped coffee. <laughs> yeah, I could do this all day and watch the sunrise. Um <laughs> You can watch the sunrise all day. <laughs> that's that's funny now too. I'm just thinking of like other movies, and I'm like, all right, here we go. Um, I could do this all day. It was um, in Civil War when they're in that end fight sequence, and I forget who says it. Whether I think it's Captain America, right? Yeah, and you actually see it in the very first, the first Avenger, where he's getting beat up in an alley, and I think he does it one other time too. But yeah, he always puts his fists up. He's kind of, I could do this all day. Like he just. It's kind of like his thing. All right. One of my favorite quotes here. The most versatile substance on the planet, and they used it to build a Frisbee. That was um, Ultron. Very good. Yeah. Very good, Joe. I'm impressed. I, one of my favorite lines in that movie. I was just like, that's really good. All right. Your ancestors called it magic. And you call it science. Well, I come from a place where they're one and the same thing. Who said it? New MCU game. It is not lame. <laughs> no, it's actually pretty good. This is fun. Yeah. Hey, uh, this one's tough. Uh, you come from a place where your ancestors call it magic. 
<laughs> I just like that. You coming from a place where your ancestors call magic. Definitely not the right line. Like, already butchered. Very confusing. <laughs> I'm happy to read it again if you want. Please do. Your ancestors called it magic, and you, and you call it science. Well, I come from a place where they're one and the same thing. I mean, that's it's close. I just like the you come you coming from a place. <laughs> <laughs> like I thought these people were meeting on neutral ground. Apparently they're at this place. <laughs> I feel like this quote when I got it is not exactly right, but it's you could take a take a stab at who would say something similar to that. Magic science early in the MCU. Who would talk about it? Yeah, well, it's it's Stark talking to. I don't know. No, it's not Stark. Let me try to do my best interpretation of this character. Your ancestors. Oh, I can't even. I can't even. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even do it. Yeah. Magic. You call it science. I come from a place where they're one and the same thing. He's talking about Yggdrasil and the nine realms and stuff who would who would who would talk like that come on son the nine realms and you know it you're just screwing with me don't do this to me don't do it i can't take it i got weak constitutions i honestly don't know take a guess of a, it's a hero pretty strong hero that you love very much thor yeah very good okay first try first try he's okay. explaining it to jane foster they're out like in the Oh, okay. Yeah, that explains why I don't remember. Your ancestors called it magic, and you call it science. When I come from a place where they're one and the same. Your, your ancestors call it magic. <laughs> you know, lower voice. Exactly, I know, I couldn't, I can't, but it's like he's got his own thing. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm a huge fan of the way you lose control and turn into an enormous green rage monster. Yeah. Yeah. Who says that to Hulk? Who says that to him? Who would say it to him? Sp no, Spider-Man and him have not met. They have not. Met. not. Who says that? I'm a big fan of you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, <laughs> I'm it's not when he met Stark. Is it when he met Stark? It's somebody that uh, Banner met on one of those floating spacecraft or aircraft carriers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who would say something like that? Stark. Yeah, very good. Yeah, he says something right before that too. He's like, "Your," he's like, "Your research on like quantum mechanics, whatever, is unparalleled." And I also love how you turned into an enormous green rage monster, uh, which is great. <laughs> um. <laughs> Beat up by Thanos. It's your conscience. We don't talk a lot these days. That's uh, that's uh, it's one of the AIs for Tony Stark. Close. Very close. Pepper Potts over the phone with Tony. No, that would be pretty funny though too. <laughs> um, I'll give you another hint. It happens in Captain America: Civil War. He says, "It's your conscience." Uh, we don't talk a lot these days. <laughs> be so close. You can oh taste it. man, is it uh, Don Cheadle, War Machine, over the radio? It's not over the radio. It's actually happening inside of his suit. Oh, shoot. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so Ant-Man's running through the suit. Yeah. yeah. Talking about Tony. I, that, that line, I think, is just so so good. You're totally going to need to take this in the tech repair or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that thing doesn't obey the laws of physics at all. It's fun to just read these lines without like giving it. Like, See, I sometimes when they're that short and that thing doesn't obey the laws of physics at all. That was a horrible impression of that person, but he's younger, so it's fine. Or she. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Are they talking about uh, Black Widow's butt? <laughs> no. Uh, I'll give you a hint. Hey, man, that was great. Captain America's shield. Yeah, uh, Spider Man says that about a shield. Very good. Yeah, because he like puts it, he like throws it, and he somehow gets it back onto his arm, and Spidey's confused by that. Mm-hmm. Last one here. Move, Captain. I won't ask a second time. Move, Captain. I will not ask a second time. Move, Captain. I won't ask a second time. Yeah, yeah, Black Panther. Yeah, dude, he's so good in that movie. I'm sorry, Civil War. Like, I love Black Panther, too. There's something about just the usage of him in that movie where I'm like, oh, everything is so good. Yeah, and he's he's kind of still mysterious. He's not yeah, a main he's like focus. prowling around, dude. Like yeah. that whole movie, he's like just stalking people. Freaking love it. Oh, yeah. so good. All right, Joe. That wraps up our game and our and our movie and game for you of the summer. Let's I do know. DC ones too. Let's go. Uh, 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 devils don't come from the ground below. <laughs> they come from <laughs> skies above. <laughs> I got him, everybody. I did it. I waited for him to drink. <laughs> it just to take you. you wait till someone takes a drink or a bite of something. Usually a drink, so you don't want them to choke. Then you tell any joke. It's fun. <laughs> got that watching Infinity War the other day, and people are always like, hey, Jimmy, when's Batman and Superman do show? My buddy Levi's like, yeah, when's uh, Jesse Eisenberg show? we like, uh, Thanos, I had an idea. Uh, like... <laughs> oh, oh, God. Yeah, that's that's how I feel. Anyway, Joe, it's that time of the show that I like to call, that you like to call, that we like to call... Time Killers. That's right, it's time for Time Killers. Joe, what are you, uh, what games you've been playing, movies you've been watching, TV shows you've been viewing, what have you been, what have you been time with, pal? For Honor, that's about it. For Honor. Yeah, you're digging it again? Yeah, I know you said you kind of got back into it. I I really like that game. I've been leveling up a cu- a few of my favorite characters. I like to run the um, Centurion. I like to run the Raider and the Warden. And uh, I've got up a rep level with both of those, but not the Centurion yet. So it's fun. I love the customization. I love if you're with a friend or two, you can kind of strategize and, uh, you know, pummel people I, I like the combat the fact that it takes a little skill you know it's not just like who's quickest to pull the trigger on somebody or anything like that it's it's actually like you got to be tactful about it so it's a good time style is uh excellent um i i really wish that they would add some more maps that would be cool um seems like it's been getting some more support as of late i think ubisoft's kind of sticking a little bit more effort back into it so um, there were even some critical uh, acclamations of one of the best resurgence in years or so. Excuse me. Yeah, it sounds like you got back into it after kind of leaving it for quite a while. Oh, yeah. I think last time I touched it was last fall. Yeah. And yeah. you just hopped back in because your our buddy Drew's been playing. Is that the yeah. reason you got back? Yeah, he, he's been playing it. He's a big kind of Nordic Viking fan. Um, so he's been playing it and uh, he... he kind of likes that style as well and then the skill um applications so um yeah we've been having a good time in there cool nice well on my end uh i've seen infinity war up to three times now feels good um been watching finish up naruto i was watching some boruto it's fine if you like naruto and you want to see where that kind of story goes it's fine it's it's like it's still what i consider to be kind of um like <laughs> like fan fiction almost i'm wearing you guys can't probably see this if you're just listening but uh i'm wearing a kakashi shirt i bought the other day at hot topic it's pretty sweet so if you're kind of like what's this design on his shirt is like a hand no um yeah it's i love naruto feather. yeah it's feather a it's feather, feather in my cat uh yeah but besides that watched uh rogue nation the other night and been watching some modern family here and there i wish there was an easier place to find more of that show because i find that when i start watching that show i could watch like eight or ten episodes in a sitting it's just like some of those sitcoms man if you get into the groove with a sitcom you're or something absolutely like absolutely right you just get right you're like i won't commit to a three-hour movie but i'll watch 20 episodes of this and you're like <laughs> like you know like you when you realize the time commitment because you're like oh i could pause this at any time and it just so just bleeds right into the next one and nothing really happens like nobody ever really changes 
like some people kind of grow a little bit, but like for the most part, you know what you're getting. And I think that's like a reason like why people love fast food so much. Like you're not like shocked at what you're getting. You're like, and I'm not saying sitcoms are fast food. I'm just saying that in the TV world, kind of, you know what I mean? Like, you know what it's going to be. It's going to be fine. It's not going to change your life. It's going to be fun, but you won't regret eating or consuming it. I should say. Like, you won't regret that. Like, look, you want a family, you watch your episodes, like, oh, it's fun. You eat some McDonald's, you might be like, I shouldn't, um, shouldn't have done it. Anyway, I think that's pretty much uh, Splinter Cell Conviction. I started playing that a little bit again. That's the Xbox 360 game. I should pick up Blacklist. I have some ideas for Splinter Cell stuff. But besides that, game-wise, nothing since God of War, really. Nothing huge. So it's kind of a nice step back a little bit. Anyway. All right, Joe. Time to move into my favorite segment of the show. Community feedback and questions. Questions. Yes, questions that I I had to ask our lovely Legionnaires what their favorite thing about, like, favorite moment in the MCU was. And there's only one that I really just want to get to here. But our buddy Ryan, Ryan Lehman says, I think every suit reveal is my favorite moment. Just awesome to see all the details for each character. I think that's a really cool one. And I think back to, uh, uh, Joe, you might have a, a personal favorite reveal of a suit or something. I think of always the Iron Man ones, and I just think of literally Iron Man 1, the first time you see the golden red armor when he puts the whole thing on, it comes together, and it just clunk right on his face. Yeah. Man, that, that suit is still good looking. Like, the Infinity War stuff, it's definitely changed. It's a little more, like, high-tech, but something about that first one is just really good. It's like... Yeah, I Ooh. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. That design, man. Are there any others besides Iron Man that you're like, wow, that's a pretty... Like, suit reveals or, like, entrances? Like... I think suit reveals, like, you know, Cap... I think, like, Captain America gets some pretty cool suits later on that he just kind of steps out of, and you're like, oh, cool. Like, these, they definitely changed his look a bit. Um, yeah, and see, his aren't as impactful as others. The, the major reveal with him... Uh, and Infinity War with the new look um, was pretty badass. Yeah, and his beard and, and stuff. And the dark behind the train. That was yeah. cool. And Which is in the trailer, good. so it's not a spoiler. All right, everybody. So everybody's fine. Uh, um, if you haven't seen it by now, give it the times. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know someone in our community who's like, he's like, I can't. There's spoilers. I'm like, dude, you just go. Like, I'm like, either just either see it or just be like, it's, just let it go. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like by now it's it's just out there too much. You can't avoid it anymore. Yeah. So, no spoiler warnings from here on out. Um, yeah, great, great reveals or should uh, Thor and his new weapon, freaking slamming down in the battlefield at Wakanda. That's not really a new suit thing. You know what I would say though? Oh, suit, suit. Period. Just suit. I will say the Hulkbuster in Ultron, they showed it in the commercials, but it's still so cool when it happens because he's like Iron Man that gets another Iron Man suit like on top of him. It's like, yeah, that is really unreal. cool. Like, and he gets it like it puts together and like, really look, you just see it all come together. Like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Uh, yeah, that's probably another good one. Yeah, so tell me, how the heck does... Uh... Oh my gosh, how did that happen? So you think about it, and we're getting off topic, but I don't give a crap. I forgot to really bring this up last week, but uh -oh. Hulk, Hulk is in the previews in Wakanda. Yes. Hulk is there. Yes. But instead, it's... Uh, um, Hulk I, forget, I forget his real name. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce Banner. Banner is in the Hulkbuster armor instead. Why? How? What the hell? Did they do that as a joke? Or just one of, like a haha, -ha and we were never going to really bring Hulk into this. Yeah, one of two things. First off, it definitely could be that they changed it out just to mess with us, or, or, and I don't know if they're doing time travel or anything crazy like that. I wonder if we might see that battle play out again with Hulk. I don't know. <laughs> that's a good. Oh, that's a cool assumption. We'll see. I don't know. I would love to see that. And there was a toy that was going around that leaked or people were showing it off. And it could be a misdirect or it could be a potential spoiler for the next movie. So if you don't want to ruin it, just, just skip this now. But there's a, a version of like a Hulk, like a Funko Pop or whatever, that's got like the Hulk ripping out of the Hulk Buster suit. Now, does that mean that they <laughs> had that in this movie originally and they took it out? Or is it going to be in the next one? Or is it never going to happen? Because it seems like the Russos get the whole, like, spoiler game. And I wouldn't be surprised if they were, like, trying to screw with everybody. 
Like when we see, you know, for instance, when Thanos goes to grab Captain America in the trailer, we only see the two stones. But actually at that point, he's got five. So it's like, those trailers are just misdirects. Yeah. But they do it, and it's not like, oh man, they didn't put that in there. I was like, oh, they tricked me, but I feel good about it, you know? Yeah, it was like, a worthwhile thing. Like, uh, you know, it leaves you questioning what if Hulk was there. Well, Thanos would have kicked his ass just like everybody else. I don't know. I, <sighs> Yeah, that's why I'm like, it's fine. And I like the Hulk a lot, but I'm not like depressed. It'd be one thing, you know, it's one thing if it's the Hulk. It's another thing if it's like a brand new character, if they show like Captain Marvel or Ghost Rider or something running in Wakanda and they don't have them in there, it'd be like, okay, now that's crossing a line. Like, you can't be like, here it is. No, it's not. You know, it's like, you know, like they're not, you're still getting the Hulk in that movie. It's just not a lot of the Hulk. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah it's cool. You can take down a giant flying worm machine thingy. Yeah, in New York, but he can't even hit Thanos hard enough to hurt him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Thanos is tough. All right, Joe, <laughs> we got two questions for us, I think. Um, first question Do you still feel excited for the future of the MCU past the Infinity War? Do you think the franchise can still keep up the excitement at its current level or even surpass it? Comes in from Fragon. Two parter there. Do you still feel excited for the future of the MCU past the Infinity War, Joe? Yeah, uh, l l life finds a way. Perfect, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, they'll figure something out. You know, yeah. something I realized, I kind of like Scarlet Witch a little more than I used to. Yeah, she's cool, man. I have a better appreciation for her after this movie. And yeah. and the actress was Elizabeth Olsen. Olsen? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'd say I'm still excited because they've proven to take anything that isn't exciting to me and make it cool. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, didn't care. Now I'm like, okay, I'm kind of interested. Like Doctor Strange, didn't care. I'm like, okay, cool. Black Panther, even before this big, I was like, always like, oh, he's kind of interesting, but I was never a huge fan. Now I'm like, cool, I want to see more of that. So, for sure. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, do you think the franchise can keep the excitement uh, at its current level or even surpass it? I think, honestly. I don't know if it'll surpass it. I, it might have plateaued. I don't know if it's peaked, but it's so hard to go from like like a 10-year build up to this and then after these two movies to keep it there. Do you agree, Joe? I don't know that you keep it there. I think it might go back to maintaining the levels of the standalones or the civil wars of of the universe, that sort of thing. So Yeah. I think yeah. it really depends too on who we see as like the main cast of Avengers and what their next big threat is. Because if you do that and you make it exciting, especially if people are just in love with characters like Doctor Strange, like Black Panther, like Spider-Man, I think you might find that if you add that and the potential, if it still goes through with like X-Men and Fantastic Four, people might be like, this is the craziest freaking superhero movie of all time. You know, like they might be like, there's like a hundred superheroes on screen at one point. You know, people be like, so i just hope it all works out there's been rumors that it might not but i don't know i will right, see i don't want to report on anything crazy until we know so yeah yeah <laughs> this has been jimmy good reporting live from <laughs> this has been mr james good reporting live from disney i'm at the magic kingdom right now i've been asking everyone to give me some information about bob Iger, and they keep saying excuse me sir this is a theme park you must leave and i'm like <laughs> do you have the 52 billion dollars here in the parks um you know they're like no. where were you on the night of the seventh <laughs> i was that event <laughs> perfect uh anyway that's those are the questions for the show if you ever have a question or a topic you guys want us to cover please all you have to do is tweet the hashtag critical podcast to either of us you can tweet at the show which is just at go critical capital g capital c or you can tweet at me personally if you've got something very special you want to ask me at jimmy good zero one three if you want to tweet something specifically to joe you could tweet at lever underscore six two seven that's lever just like beaver only with an a very good. And if you'd like to hang out with me or potentially Levi from time to time over on twitch.tv slash Coco Reviews, watch some games. That's where you can do that. I want to thank a few people. I want to thank This Is Dale for our theme music. And I'd like to thank the one and only Yorn Evers for doing pretty much all the art you see here on the channel with a few exceptions. But yes, Yorn is fantastic. He does commissions. So if you ever want a commission done, check him out at Niraj28 on Twitter or at Jade Circle Art on Twitter and just tell him Jimmy and Joe sent you. But if you want to support him and us at the same time, check us out on patreon.com slash critical reviews and you can get your face and own personal avatar made by Yorin. 
to support the Legion. You can look really cool and eventually at the highest tier of hundred dollars, you can you can customize every little thing on there. But it's really cool to see your character rise through the ranks. And a few of our Legionnaires here have started doing that. It's very cool. So thank you to everyone who's supporting us there. We really appreciate it. We love you guys so much. And uh yeah, thank you for for just like spreading the word, sharing us around. That's the best thing you can do for us. If you want us to grow, you want to see us do be bigger and better and get better equipment and eventually find out a way to make this all even look prettier. Uh, that's that's the best way you can help. So share us around, spread the word. If you can't, throw us a buck or two. So anyway, Joe, thank you for being on the show, pal. Anything else you want to say? Jimmy, always a pleasure podcasting with you, pal. Well, it's always a pleasure podcasting with you too, buddy. Let's get, get me right in the heart, just right there. Uh, anyway, thank you, you for stab you in the back. I complimented you for crying out loud. You stab me with you stab me in the front with your love. That's anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What a great note to end on. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Love and hugs. Remember to adapt and overcome. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Wow.